really able because I witnessed it. Thank God for this series because um, um, some couple of places I went to uh, share the word, and God has proved Himself that He's able. Amen. And uh, the, the last current one is that the, the place I went to uh, 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 share the word to them, and uh, it was these are most of them are pastors and. Uh, um, God gave a message, but the message changed because of that, as a result of that place I was going to. And that word that came was that that week, God was going to promote somebody. And I, I never knew about those pastors and things going on in their lives. But I went to another program. Um, the pastor, in fact, I was just coming, just waving at me, come, come, come. He said, I had a testimony. He said, what testimony? He said, I've been here for a long time. You, you never knew that I did, I did not have documents and that um, a Monday, the week after the preaching, they gave him five years. <laughs> Praise God. They gave him what? How many? Five years for a start. Amen. Then another, another pastor told me, it was yesterday, that, and it's in the same parish things are happening. Told me that actually that the house has been on the rent or to rent for a long time. Nobody has come. But this time around, government themselves, they wanted to rent his house for at least two years. Amen. Praise God. The same God that has been doing it for them. So why I'm saying this is that when the words are coming, you have to take it seriously. Amen. When you say God is able to do something in somebody's life, he's able to do it in your life. Today, uh, several will be talking of the abilities of God. And we have several names that are attached to God's name. And some of them, we still know them. Jehovah, his name was, the, I am that I am, isn't it? Yahweh. Jehovah. Elohim. His name is what? Elohim. Again, Adonai. El Shaddai. Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Jireh. We sang it today. The one that provides. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Secures our victory. Jehovah and Sekune, our righteousness. Do we still remember all of them? Praise God. If you do, it will go along, along with helping us. Um, today, we're talking of God is able to heal. God is able to heal. Oh, I'll, I'll tell me, put it part one because actually uh, this healing aspect, there are many questions. And the next Sunday we'll be dealing with several issues. People ask about going to doctor or the rest or the faith and everything. So next Sunday, tell somebody I will be here. <laughs> Tell somebody I will be here because your question will be answered by the, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, but today I will just limit it to certain aspect. Do we believe that God can do all things? God can do what? All things, not some. All things, including healing, isn't it? In other words, he's able to heal. Because if he could do everything, God is able to Heal. Actually, we are created to enjoy good health. I am created to enjoy good health. I don't know about you, but me, I am created to do what? Enjoy good health. That's the purpose God created me. To. Amen. <laughs> God is able to reshape us. God is able to reshape us. God is also able to what again is God able to do? I'm talking of healing. I say God is able to reshape and God is able to supply spare parts that are rotting back to your body. Isn't it? So if you are sick today, it means that if God is able to heal, is able to supply spare parts to your body, that impaired place, yes, will be repaired. The impaired aspect of your body will be repaired because it's able to heal. It means that 
every damaged system, every damaged organs, every damaged cell, every damaged tissue, and muscles, or you can call them joints, could be replaced by God. And he's able to do that. Every situation, he can heal it. He's able to do that. That's what the God we are serving. Now, how do I know that? If, I look, if you look at the book of Isaiah 64, 8. Isaiah 64, 8. It tells us that God is the porter. Yeah? You know what porter is. So if you have like a, a cup like this, you are holding it. If you go to the portrait in, in Delft, have you been ever, where you be, some of you have not been there, where they have these shaping cups, you see them holding it, a porter. Yes, it's the porter. So it means that when that cup is going, it can reshape it to a plate. Isn't it? So, and we are the clay. He uses us, he, we are the clay, but God is the one that pours, that moves us. Now, if you also read Jeremiah 18 throughout, it talks about that that potter, who is our God, is able to reshape us into, if one is going, is not functioning, one aspect, if he's making a ring, and that ring is falling off, he's going to reshape it into another thing and make it fine. It will be refined and reshaped. Are you with me? Because actually, Actually, I think in Luke, in Luke, uh, is it twenty twenty one, something like that? It talks about the details of our head. He knows every detail of our hair. Or Matthew uh, ten thirty talks about the hair, our hair. He knows the detail of them. So if he knows that, which means every part of our body, he knows them, and he can supply the spare parts. Amen. Psalm 103, 2 to 3 says, Psalm 103, 2 to 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. We sang it today. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not what? All his benefits. Who forgives your iniquities? Who does what? Forgives your iniquities and heal all your diseases. God is going to heal any disease in your life today in Jesus' name. Jeremiah 30, 17a. Jeremiah 30, 17a said, For I will restore what? I will restore health to you and do what? Heal you of your wounds. Now, what wound are you carrying today? What kind of wound are you carrying? I do not know. But any wound you are carrying in your heart, on your body today, our God is able to heal. He's able to restore. He's able to cure. That's the law we serve. How do I know that? I have experienced it. In fact, when I was young, I think about seven years, I still remember it. You know, I was at the point of death. In fact, I knew that I was, because foams were coming out of my mouth. Because of, I don't know what happened. I did not know. But I could remember that my senior brother took me at the back here. In fact, you know, when you have a sloppy something, you know, all my, my, my muscles, they were not functioning again. Because foams were just coming. Somebody almost dying. So they took me to that uh, he was running. People, see, people saw us on the road. I couldn't even recognize any of them. But I knew I was at his back. I was running just to save the life. We went to that. Thank God for some medical doctors. We went to that place then. They gave me something to drink. I drank that. And God restores. He restored my life. And many things that God restored in my life. Praise God. And that's why when I stand to praise God, I know what I'm talking about. About master healer. He is a healer. He will heal you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us uh, look at it. Turn to the book of Exodus 15. Exodus 15. I'll 
for it from 22. From 22. Uh, before uh, this fast, uh, that was when after the children of Israelites, after they have crossed the river, you remember the river? The Red Sea, isn't it? God did what? God saved them from the hands of the Egyptians. And God protected them. They crossed the Red Sea. And these are people that were praising God. You can see if you, if you read from uh, that 15, from 1, you see how they were praising what? They were praising God. Dancing, thanking God for, in fact, delivering them from the hands of their enemies. And then, at a point, when they cross to the other side of the river, tell somebody God is taking you to the other side. <laughs> Amen. But there's something that happened there. Something happened. Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the shore uh, desert. In fact, some Bible scholars say this shore is like a wall of desert. You know, just a wall, a brick. So they met that kind of wall in that desert. He said, they traveled in this desert for three days without what? Water. People that were just delivered immediately. It means, it looks as though they were just living from the, God has saved them to bring them to the, where they will suffer. That's the way it looks. Then they went to that place without water three uh, days. When they came to Mara, they finally found water. When they came to where? Mara, they finally found, found water. But the people could not drink it because it was bitter. They came to that place, Mara, they found a water, finally found a water. After three days, they have no water, remember? They, have not, they did not drink anything. The third day, the Bible says that they finally found water. If you were, if you were them, what would you have done? You would just do a rush to the water, even it, isn't it, to drink. But they tried that, but the water was bitter. That is why the place was called Mara, which means bitter. Amen. Think about it. These are people that were shouting praises, and they went out three days without water. Then I finally found water, and the water was bitter. Which means they couldn't even drink that water. If you were them, what would you be doing? Complaining, isn't it? Grumbling. <laughs> From praising to grumbling. Yes? So, but the question is that, have you at your point of your life come to Mara? If you have not, I don't know. But I know at a point in my life I have been, now and then I've, I've, I've come to that aspect of Mara. When you think you are moving forward, it comes, it looks like something is blocking something. And they begin to wonder, have I made a mistake? Or did I do something wrong? Am I the only one? Everyone will just enter into place freely, easily. But when it comes to you, <laughs> there will be a lot of protocols. Why me? Have you experienced that? I believe that some of you have experienced Mara before. Or you're experiencing it now. But maybe one time, sometime in your life, you could experience it. No wonder Naomi called, changed her name to Mara. Ruth, one twenty. Can somebody read it? But she said to them, "Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me." <laughs> this was the lady that everybody had died <laughs> around her. Everything she had. 
It looks as though that he has lost everything. So he has no hope. I mean, it seems as though he has, there was no hope. But if you read the story of Naomi and everybody there, you saw what happened. It's through that route that our Lord Jesus Christ came. Praise God. So surely something good will come out of your mother in Jesus' name. But don't give up because he is able. Now let's go ahead. Then he says, 24. Then the people turned against Moses. Ah, of, of, of course. <laughs> Moses is used to that. <laughs> Everything will be Moses' fault. Like some of us, when it happens, we we'll start apportioning what blames. If I had not gotten a, a son, oh, I would have done this. If I, haven't a, if I have a husband, something like this wouldn't have happened. Or if I, didn't, if I haven't gone to that place, something like this wouldn't have happened. How are you sure? How are you sure? Those are the questions you ask. You start to complain. They forgot the praising. Those are the people that were praising before, remember? It was a hard time. Three, 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 three days, no water. And they finally got water. It was bitter. Sometimes there are tests. Amen. Sometimes in life, there are tests of faith. There, is, there are tests of commitment. In fact, I, would, would, I was with a lady. She told me, oh, they brought somebody new to, clean, to be cleaning her house. Old lady. So you know what this lady, what she, she was doing? The new lady will clean somewhere. She, she will bring a piece of paper and drop it on the floor <laughs> to know if the lady will clean that place. Then every time she said, ah, she told the lady, you have not cleaned the place. But the lady will say, I have cleaned it. He said, I want to know how she, the lady will react. If she is somebody that will be angry to finish, finish her on the house. You understand? So sometimes, God is like that. You understand? How do you know that you have patience or faith if something has not happened to you? Praise God. So, have trust in God. Now, there is something there. When you are going through that, what will, what, what will be your reaction? That is, your reaction is very, very important. What will be your first reaction? Now, let's, but let's take an example from Moses. Moses did what? Bible says here that, and so Moses cried out to the Lord for help. Moses did what? Cried out to the Lord. To help. Did he join those people and say, God, you have done this or that? He forgot, he forgot about them. He went to, cried out. The Bible did not say, they cried out. It said, Moses cried out for help to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. And the Lord showed him a branch. God showed him what? A branch from the tree. A branch. Showed him a branch. Moses took the branch and threw it into the water. And what happened? This water, this made the water good to drink. God is going to give you a solution in Jesus' name. And you will begin to drink a wonderful drink in your lives in Jesus' name. Their life will, know, it will turn that bitterness into betterness in Jesus' name. And that is what God can do because he's able. He's able to heal. He's able to cure. He was only there to know what these people will do. What do they take me off? Who am I to them? Do they know actually that I'm able to do this? To establish more confidence, uh, uh, that trust and covenant with them. Praise God. God is able to heal. There's something significant about that tree. But God has also given us our own tree, which is the cross of the Calvary, our Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? So by the time you introduce Jesus in your situation, there will be a solution. Does it make sense? 
and the tree is I mean the represent our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us the cross of the Calvary our Lord Jesus Christ the moment we introduce because he is the, the way the truth and life and that's why he said without me you can do nothing that's the person God has introduced to us praise God so whatever situation you are going into cry unto him and so Jesus come and take control come and take over and because he is the only solution you can have praise God our God is a healer whether you are a physical sickness emotional or you can name them spiritual we have got have that introduction God provide God is showing you our Lord Jesus Christ only if you could cry unto him praise God so that's what Moses did. And it was there at Marah that the Lord laid before them the following condition to test their faithfulness to him. To do what? To test their faithfulness to him. Now he said, listen to this verse. If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and laws, then I will not make you suffer the diseases I sent to the uh, I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. What is God saying that I didn't say that God Himself says, I am the one that heals. And when we talk about healing, we are portion what Jehovah Rapha. We are portion what Jehovah Rapha which means the Lord that heals. In fact, Jehovah Rapha, you can see it in the Old Testament about 60 times. Jehovah uh, Rapha, the Lord that heals. Some people call it Jehovah Rofi or Jehovah Rofeka. They are the same thing. So when somebody says Jehovah Rofeka, it means also the one that heals, the one that cures, the one that restores. That's what it means. So God is telling us today that he is the one that heals. He is the one that heals and restores. Then if you, if you we read further, verse 27, after leaving the bitterness, that is Mara, yeah? After leaving Mara, they came to Elim. So you see what happened? There is transformation now. He said, we are there, we are 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They come there beside the springs. From what? Desert to springs. So after that, that God has introduced himself as the one that heals, what happened next? Bitter was turned into plenty of sweetness and springs of water. If you read John 7, 37, Jesus is the what? The living water. Jesus is what? The living water. And that is what we have today. We have that living water that we cannot test anymore. We cannot do what thirst anymore because we have Christ. It's the living water. The moment to introduce Christ, the blood of Christ, introduce Christ into your situation, healing will take effect. Praise God. So that is what we need to do. Hallelujah. Now, I will only touch today three types of, of healing. Three types of healing. That God. Uh, I will introduce that by looking at Psalm 6, 2 to 3. Psalm 6, 2 to 3. Then we look at them, one after the other. Psalm 6, 2 to 3. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Yes. For I am weak. O oh Lord, heal me. For my bones are troubled. Mm -hmm. My soul also is greatly troubled. Mm -hmm. But you, O oh Lord, how long? Mm -hmm. Return, O oh Lord, deliver me. Oh, save me. No, it's okay, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Thank, thank you very much. Two, three. Now, what do you see say here? I am sick. At the heart. That is the book. I'm sick inside. 
um, week. When we look at the week, the, the word, when you correspond emotion into it is weakness, you understand? So there's aspect of emotion there. Then when you look at, when it says, um, for my body is in agony, the physical body, that is the physical aspect of healing. That is the physical aspect of what? Healing. Then he said now, I am sick at heart. That is spiritual. Amen? I am sick at heart or soul. That is spiritual aspect. So, in other words, we have three aspects. Physical healing, emotional healing, and spiritual healing. Now, the physical healing, when you talk of bones are troubled, the question today is that what are the challenges you're having today? All of us, most of you, we have challenges. I have some physical challenges in my life. But because of what I've seen God do with the children of Israelites, I have strong conviction that is able to heal me in this physical aspect. There was a man in the Bible, in 2 Kings 20, 5 to 6. There was a man named Hezekiah. You know, this man, he was sick. The man told him that he has to prepare his what? Yes, get his house in order. Because he's going to, he was going to die. Have you been to a hospital where some diseases somebody has? They say, three, three months you are doing what? You are going to die. Or six months you are going to die. I have get, I've given testimony here many times of my mother-in-law that they were, was diagnosed as pancreatic uh, cancer. It's the deadliest cancer you can think of. That's about two years ago. She's still alive today with prayers. Amen. In fact, we are told after that operation in two, two, three weeks or three months that, is, let's, that she should enjoy what she will enjoy now. That was the, the word of the doctors. We have had somebody in this, in this church that also gave testimony. They said he could, she, could not have, she couldn't have any baby, that she can't have baby at all because her womb is small. And she, in fact... The arthritis she has, we eat every aspect of her place, and she will also end up in a wheelchair. But God said no. She had a bouncing baby boy celebrating the third year of that baby. And she was very strong. The baby was freely born, naturally born, not operation. And the doctor will say, this could not be. Have you been in that situation? What do you have? What is in that in your life? The physical aspect. Now, this Hezekiah, you know what happened? Eventually, Hezekiah did what? Cried unto the Lord. The prophet came back saying, fact, God has given you an extra 15 years. That's the God we serve. He's able to heal physically. Every type of physical illness or situations. Whether you can call it financial aspect, there are physical things. He's able to heal. Only cry unto him first. Cry unto him. Don't run to the negative alternatives. They will rather add injury to your wound. Amen. They will do what? They will add more. You know, when somebody is injured, they have another wound. <laughs> Amen. Now, we also have in the Bible, we have this blind man, Bartimaeus. He cried unto Jesus. Jesus, son of God, do what? Help me. And his sight was restored. Because Jesus was the tree. Was the answer? Was that healing? That Bible also talked about 
Luke 8, 43 onwards. Talking about this woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, you can imagine a woman, the blood was. He said, This woman had visited all the doctors in that time. But the blood continued to you know, emit from her body. For how many years? 12. And when you talk about blood going out of a woman's body in that day, in that year in the Jewish tradition, it means that you will not stay close to anybody. In fact, you will not come out. But he heard that there was a tree passing by. Amen. Remember the tree. Jesus Christ. The Bible said that he buddhos her way because he wanted to get hold of that tree, which was Jesus Christ. And eventually he was, she was made whole. She was, Jesus as something went out of me. Power. It's time for you to trouble Jesus until the power goes out of him. If the woman should, could bulldoze her way and touch the hem of Jesus, and we have that opportunity only for you to cry. But for us, we cry in a wrong way. We go to another person to cry and begin to apportion blames. And they will go and tell you it's your old grand-grand-grandfather that caused your problem. Jesus created them. He's the one that will take care of you. Amen. Praise God. Now, because of time, of course, we have about uh, Naaman was also head of leprosy. Second King 5, 14 to 17. Second King 5, 14 to 17. Naaman was healed of his uh, leprosy. That's a physical uh, healing. Now, the second aspect is the emotional. That Psalms, that Psalm 6, 2 to 3, talk about that emotional, the weak. Now, when I was, I read Psalm 147, 3, it said, He heals what? God heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. Jesus heals the broken hearted. And do, do what? He does what? Binds up their wounds. Now, I don't know about, about what is going on in your life. Do you have wounds of disappointments in your life? Now you say wound. You have this wound of disappointment in your life. Divorce is a wound. It's a wound. But God is able to heal. God is able to heal. Abuse. I've met somebody that told me that he will never forgive his father. Because the father abused her. You can imagine a father abusing a daughter. No, she has been carrying that scar in her life. But I told her that God is able to heal your wound if you let him. I don't know what kind of wound you are carrying today. God is going to heal you. He, wound of bitterness, anger. Because of those, you are not able to withstand any discussion. You separate yourself from people. You stand alone, lonely, because you think that the whole world hates you. It's a lie of the devil. Because we have a comforter. We have our Lord Jesus Christ who can heal that wound in your life if you cry out to him. Now God talks about also obedient to his word. That is important. And trusting him. Hallelujah. Some people carry in that issue of hatred because of what happened in their life. There's tendency for them to, to hate anybody that comes their way. Now, don't do that. Because we have that tree that can heal your wound. You can't carry it forever. You cannot do what? Carry it forever or alone. God is ready to heal you. Have you are you feeling of that kind of abandonment? 
that you are being abandoned, that nobody cares about you, I tell you there is a master that cares. So long as you cast your burdens onto him, he cares for you. He will heal that wound. And who is that man that can stand on the way? Nobody. But Jesus heals. He heals the wound. Let him heal that wound in your life. In Jesus' name. The last part, the spiritual aspect. It talks about the heart. It talks about our soul. The people, soul and heart, the same. In fact, before Christ, all of us, myself, all of us, before we were born, we were carrying this disease. We were carrying what? This disease that could not be cured. From Adam and Eve. We are carrying that in our lives. But God provided this healing. That this tree. And we have that healing through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it? That's a wonderful healing in our lives. In fact, that healing supersedes every other healing. Because with that, the rest will be easy. When you have spiritual healing, physical and emotional will be easy to come by, isn't it? That is the basis. So God, because God knows that according to Jeremiah 17, 9, he said the heart of man is desperately what? Wicked. He knows that Satan can use anybody to destroy your life. Our heart is the wicked. Nobody wants you to progress. Satan does not want you to destroy. Uh, do what progress. In fact, John 10.10, 10, he talks about the mission of the Satan. It's to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. But that spiritual healing through Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus Christ was introduced when he came to the temple in, John, in Luke 4.18. What did he say? He has come to liberate us. Those that are depressed. Those that are sick. In many ways, in many forms. That is why Jesus Christ came. He has that passion. You know, that's the love of God. So, in other words, God has healing in his heart for us. So, you and I have to benefit from this by crying out unto God. He's the one that heals. Can somebody read Mark? Matthew 8, 16. Another person, Mark 1, 32 to 33. 32 to 33, yes. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who, who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. <laughs> and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases Amen. and cast out many demons <laughs> and he did not allow the demons to speak yes because they knew him he did not allow the demons to speak so today every demon in op operation in your life by the power in the blood and in our lord jesus christ you are healed in jesus name because that demon they know the name of jesus they know jesus but Jesus will not allow them to speak in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The power of Jesus will suppress and even uproot them in the mighty name of Jesus. Mark 8, 16. Matthew, sorry. Matthew 8, 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit in his way, and in all that were sick. He cast out the spirit in them. That's a spiritual healing. Praise God. So whichever curse enemy has placed in your family, in your life, because you cry unto God and you trust and believe in Christ, that curse will not do anything in your life. Because God has delivered you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Only cry unto him. Praise God. Shall we rise on our feet? 
Now, I want to call for prayer. And this prayer is, you know, there is introduction that Jesus, uh, God did to Moses. God showed him. God introduced a branch to him. God showed him a branch. And that branch was what caused the healing. It changed. It cured. So the branch I'm going to introduce it to you today is Jesus Christ. So if you are here today and you really want to be, uh, uh, I mean, have that healing, that the spiritual one we already have, and you want to, you have been coming to church thinking that you already, you have given your life to Christ. In fact, this is the opportunity to you really, really actually give your life to him. You just, if you are such a person today, you know, I always say you need to be bold to do this. You have to come out boldly and declare today that I really want to give my life to Christ. Because that is the branch. I've been going to church. It doesn't matter what people think about you. You just come today and boldly proclaim and confess and say, Thank you for coming. Any other person, then we pray. The prayer is not much. You only have to say after me, Lord Jesus, in my life, I have done many things. But peradventure, I have not known you truly. Today, I confess my sins to you. For you, Lord Jesus, to come and be my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, for helping me. Thank you for taking me back. Thank you for healing me. In Jesus' name. Shall we give a clap offering unto the Lord? God bless you. Now, for those of us, I mentioned three aspects of feeling physical, spiritual, emotional. If you are going through any of these aspects right now, this is the time for you to come out. Or you are going through all three of them. It could be possible. It's time for you to boldly come out because God is going to do something. And you are going to testify just like people that testify every day. I want you to come out boldly and let's pray for you. We join my faith with you and we pray for God to heal this aspect of your life. For God to turn this captivity into the springs that flows to heal him. It's a simple prayer of faith. I'm not a magician. God is a miracle worker. Every prayer is prayed through faith. I join my faith with you. And it's a simple prayer. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well. It is well, it is well with. Shall we close this prayer? Any of you going through the, the, these situations? I want you to lift your, uh, lift your hands and say, Father, say, Father, heal me now. Go ahead and turn it into prayer. I don't know the situation, the level, the types. If I have time to call unto him, the Bible said that Moses cried unto the Lord and said, Father, I need your help. Heal me now. 
Every matter in my life, Lord, turn them to, bit, to sweetness. Turn them to better. Turn my bitterness into betterness. If you have something like that. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you for your healing. 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 Thank you, Father God Almighty. You are great. You are great. You are interested in my life. You are interested in your people's lives. For healing them, oh God. You have the power to heal. You are able to heal. You are able to heal. Thank you for the healing in my life, oh God. In your churches, oh God. In my family, oh God. Thank you for healing us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, Father, we want to thank you and glorify your holy name. We thank you for taking care of our situations. Thank you, Father Lord, as we call on, on you this today. We thank you for hearing us. And we thank you for answered prayer. Father, for your child that has given his life to you, Lord, we pray that you turn his life around. Lord, show him those things that he has never even imagined or thought of in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, as we continue this service, we pray that your spirit will continue to be with us and even to continue to heal in the remaining part of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you.